Okay, reaction video time. This is a little bit of a different one for me. Uh, this is Lost in the Pond, Five Ways British and American Bedrooms Are Very Different. Now, I've never been in a British uh, bedroom at all, so let's let's see what the differences are. One of the most common bedroom differences I get asked about is, why do Americans sleep with that extra sheet between the quilt and you? Well, the reason is, is because we have women that are in the bed with us, and they want that. That's the easiest answer I can think of. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And, and there's apparently quite a bit of them. One of those memos pertains to bedrooms. In Britain and throughout the world, people need a designated room where they can go to sleep and do other stuff, like reading, for example. But depending on the country that you're in, the bedroom, a word supposedly coined by Shakespeare, might take a different form. And as somebody who has lived extensively in both Britain and America, this is most certainly true of those two countries. And so without further ado, here are five ways that British and American bedrooms are very different. Now, I've always had a built-in closet. I don't know, can't remember never having a built-in closet. Before we even get to the main centerpiece of the bedroom, which is the bed, there is one major thing that American bedrooms have that most British bedrooms do not, and it's something contained not within the four walls of the bedroom, but within the wall. I'm talking about built-in closets. Yeah, it's yes, where you put your clothes and put everything, you hang it all up there, and so it's ready for the next day. Seems pretty, pretty straightforward to me. Now, this is my walk-in closet. I say mine, I mean, it is shared with my wife, of course. I say shared. I mean, it's it's mostly hers. No, it's really mostly, yeah, you got it right. It's mostly hers. Your closet space may be uh, designated for your clothes, but it really belongs to her, and you just take whatever she doesn't want, which is not a whole lot. So you might be thinking, well, Lawrence, where do British people hang their clothes? And the answer is simple, in a wardrobe that admittedly takes up more space. And you can actually get a pretty decent... Uh, antique wardrobes uh, in the United States, but they, he is correct. Uh, they, nobody, nobody has a wardrobe, not that I've never used a wardrobe. Unless it leads to Narnia. But while America may have- Ah, the Chronicles of Narnia, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, one of my favorite books when I was in third grade. The advantage in the closet department, Britain is still leading the way on these. I have never, ever saw a need for a hot water bottle. Back in the days when I still dressed like a child, you bought me this t-shirt, so you can leave it out. Back in the days when I was still a child, I distinctly remember sleeping alongside a rubber accessory that was filled with hot water. It was a hot water bottle. You know, I had something similar to that. I slept in a water bed where I could change the heat, just the heat to either cool or, or, or warm. Uh, I never needed a hot water bottle. And it was one of those things that I'd forgotten about until researching for this video. For anyone not in the know, a hot water bottle is exactly the accessory I just described. And its purpose is to keep you warm while you sleep. It Don't the covers do that? Can be a problem if you accidentally burst it, because then your parents think you have another problem and you have to go see a doctor. Now, with the advent of electric blankets, hot water bottles have seen a decline in popularity. Had an uh, electric blanket at one time too. This is particularly true in the United States, but I have it on good authority that people still occasionally use them in Britain. But part of me believes that most of them just use it to refill their tea without leaving the bed. Yes, I've heard about this. So when I was in Germany, we slept. We had my father, my brother, and I uh, shared a hotel room, and we all had the equivalent to three twin-size beds. They weren't very big. As always, now we weren't going to sleep with each other, to be fair, but uh, that's what it was. When it comes to comparing British and American things, inevitably it always comes back to size. And you might not be too surprised to learn that American beds, on the whole, are longer, wider, or sometimes both, than British beds. That usually goes to the woman as well, because usually if you sleep with a woman, they tend to want a lot more of the bed than what you actually want to give them. And you really don't have much of a choice in the matter. It's not like you can say... Um, honey, you need to, no, you don't even start it with that. It's, it's better just to take, if you're in a hotel room, take two queen sizes if you can get away with it. But yeah. So let's take a look at how that plays out or 
lays out. That's a bed pun. Sorry, let's just take a look. So the smallest bed size in the United States is the twin bed. This measures in at roughly 39 by 75 inches. And its nearest equivalent in Britain is a single bed, which is... Yeah, that would never work. Just as long as an American twin, but four inches less wide. After that, America has a twin XL, which is coupled with Britain's small double. Try saying that after four whisks. I always just call the twin XL a full. If that's unless it's, that's the next one up. I've never heard of a twin XL. Skis. And then America has what is yeah. known as the full-size mattress. This is 54 inches by 75. This is almost identical to the double-size mattress in Britain. From here on out, things become like a game of chess, as both countries sort of introduce a royal family of mattress sizes. In the US, some people sleep on the Queen, not the Queen, that would be breaking news, on a Queen-sized mattress, which is about 60 inches by 80. This is virtually identical to Britain's King-sized mattress. But neither country ousts their bedroom monarchy there. What's better than a Queen? A Super Queen. In the US, this... And I've never heard of a Super Queen before. I've, I'm sure there exists, but I've never seen one. Measures in at 66 inches by 80. Funnily enough, the nearest equivalent in Britain is called, can you guess what it's called, can you, can you? It's called a Super King, and it's 72 inches by 80. And so Britain wins, except it doesn't, because America also has a king-size bed that measures 76 by 80. And at this point, Britain's mattresses abdicated the throne, while America's just kept going with the California King at 72 inches by 80. Again, I've never seen a California King. I don't know if they're only available in California I don't even know why they're called California Kings, but I've never slept. I don't think I've ever slept in a California King. Now, king size bed is very nice to sleep on, especially if you're by yourself. You can spread out. You can do all kinds of things, and it, it, it's really a nice, nice, nice bed to sleep on. But like I said, most of us sleep with women, and if you or maybe other guys, I don't know. I I, I sleep with a woman, sorry, but uh, if you sleep with a woman, it's generally she gets three quarters of it, and you are lucky to get maybe that side, whichever side she doesn't want. 84, and that's just... That edge you might be able to, to fit yourself on. Showing off. So perhaps this additional size is why Americans are more likely to use one of these. However massive the mattress, it's more common in the US than the UK for it to sit on top of what is known as a box spring. And while I definitely couldn't claim to be a bed connoisseur, I hadn't heard of the phrase box spring until I moved to America. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, we don't call it that. Apparently, we call it either a sprung bed base or a divan. Well, you say tomato, I say tomato. You say potato, I say potato. You know, looks like it serves the same purpose. I've never used those terms either, and that's because this particular contraption is much less common in Britain. And so what is this contraption? Well, a box spring is a base that sits under your mattress that sort of incorporates a spring system. Gives it a little bit of a nice little comfy oomph. System like you might find in your mattress. And the idea is with that additional bounce, I won't keep doing that, the springs in the mattress have a greater shelf life. In Britain, our mattresses tend to sit on harder surfaces, meaning that the springs in your mattress wear down more quickly. I've never been to Britain before, so I can't speak on that, but okay. Whatever, make, whatever makes them happy. It's their country. Depending on how much you put them under duress. Mine were mostly fine, but so much for what goes under the mattress. Let's take a look at what goes on top. One of the most common bedroom differences I get asked about is... Why do Americans sleep with that extra sheet between the quilt and you? And because the woman wants it there. I last night I was in a hotel room with my girlfriend and she was mortified when she pulled that there was no second sheet. Actually there was. She just did, forgot to pull it out underneath the pillow. But she was like, "Oh my god, there's no no, it's there." It's usually there because the woman wants it there. And this is what's known as a top sheet. And while I have read that top sheets have become less popular among younger Americans, they are not... Nope. She's not, not, not that I've heard of. ...nonetheless still in wide use. But what purpose do they serve? Well, aside from adding an additional layer of... Happy girlfriend or happy wife equals happy life. That's what they serve. They make them happy. As long as they're happy, I'm happy. That's how it works. Warmth for Americans that don't know the joys of a hot water bottle. A top sheet is often used for hygienic reasons. The theory being that your body, and therefore body odour and sweat and dirt, doesn't come into contact with the comforter slash quilt. And Now, I've never heard of that, but no. It's because the woman wants it there. 
And I can get behind this idea. That's just based on my experience. Yeah, because it means you can wash the comforter less often. Who needs bulky laundry? Now, because Americans are more likely to use this approach than British people, they're also more likely to not use a duvet cover because what's the point? In Britain, this is largely how we get around the hygiene problem, if indeed we choose to. Now, if Reddit is anything to go by, then this is the source of a heated debate. So let me know in the comments below, top sheet or no top sheet. Happy girlfriend, top sheet. As for me and my American wife, we compromised on both a top sheet. If I'm sleeping by myself, which is often, so just is, uh, I don't care. But uh, girlfriend, top sheet all the way. Love my top sheet. And a quilt cover for some reason. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below how you keep your bedroom. Just keep it general. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. No, those aren't going to get lost in the pond. They're very good videos. A big shout out to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until next time, goodbye. Oh, that was fun. This is Lost in the Pond. If you haven't heard it before or ever seen it before, he has a lot of videos up there about the differences between England and uh, the United States, and they're very, very entertaining. Please click a like and subscribe for him, as well as for me. Uh, this was a different video, and I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, like I said, please click a like and subscribe. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for watching.